In this video, I'm going to explain why there may be a benefit to enabling YCC422 on the Xbox Series X for televisions without HDMI 2.1 support. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. When I explained the most important video settings on the Xbox Series X last year using the LG CX or C10 OLED, I recommended leaving the Allow YCC422 setting disabled because the LG CX is capable of a high HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second. However, if you don't have an HDMI 2.1 television, you may want to consider engaging YCC422. Let me explain. So recently, I was testing out this new Hisense L5 Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector, and Hisense is one of the very few TV brands which have been considerate enough to display the bit depth and chroma subsampling of the incoming video signal. The Hisense L5 has 4 HDMI 2.0 ports. When I disable YCC422 on the Xbox Series X, you can see from the signal information screen on the projector that with a UHD resolution at 60Hz, which is what most games run at if you don't have an HDMI 2.1 display capable of 4K 120Hz, the bit depth was 10 bit and the chroma subsampling was YUV420. However, once we engaged YCC422 on the Xbox Series X, and we returned to the game and checked out the signal information, you can see that the bit depth had increased to 12-bit, and the chroma resolution went up to YUV422. The results were the same when we played Gemini Man, one of the very few 4K Blu-ray discs available in UHD resolution at 60 frames per second, with YCC422 disabled on the Xbox Series X. The bit depth and chroma subsampling topped out at 10 bit 420, but once we ticked Allow YCC 422 on the Xbox Series X, the video signal went up to 12 bit 422. To explain the reason behind our results, we need to first talk about HDMI bandwidth. HDMI 2.0 has a maximum bandwidth of 18 gigabits per second, but according to this excellent HDMI bandwidth calculator from Muridio, a 4K 60Hz video signal at 10 bit 444 would require a bandwidth of 20 gigabits per second, which doesn't fit into the HDMI 2.0 pipeline. If you don't select Allow YCC422, the Xbox Series X would drop the chroma sampling all the way down to 420, with the bit depth staying at 10 bit. On the other hand, if you enable YCC422, the chroma sampling would only drop to 422 and the bit depth would go up to 12-bit, with the total HDMI bandwidth still falling within the maximum HDMI 2.0 bandwidth of 18 gigabits per second. With all this said, should you leave YCC422 on or off on the Xbox Series X if your TV doesn't support HDMI 2.1? Unfortunately, the answer varies from TV to TV, because one television may handle 10-bit input better, but another may do better with 12-bit video signal. This is something you may have to test yourself. Normally, I would recommend using the Spears & Munsell UHD HDR benchmark disk, but the test patterns don't run at 4K 60Hz, so all I can suggest is to fire up an HDR game, focus your attention on the sky or any other background with gradients, then toggle between YCC422 on and off to see which one looks smoother to your eyes. Alternatively, if you own Gemini Man on 4K Blu-ray, this is a good frame to check for posterization when switching between YCC422 on and off. I'm keeping this video short and sweet, like the appendages of a gingerbread man, but if you'd like to watch some of our other videos on the Xbox Series X, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it, and I will see you in the next video.